Hello my intellectual friends, welcome back to the channel. The Wunderkammer item for today is this beautiful piece of the Berlin Wall. Well, actually no, it is this piece. I acquired it in Berlin a couple of years ago, not far from the famous Checkpoint Charlie location. A lot of fragments of the original Berlin Wall are now for sale, the majority being smaller fragments like this one. For a more pronounced piece, like the one shown here, prices quickly go up exponentially, as you can imagine. And if you have really deep pockets, an actual complete section of the wall is available for you. Let's have a look at some history related to this Wunderkammer item. But let's start with the end first. On November 9, 1989, tens of thousands of people reached a wall in central Berlin and crossed a border no one had ever imagined could be crossed in their lifetime. It was the fall of the Berlin Wall and with it the end of the era of the Soviet Union and Warsaw Pact. How did this all start though? How could a 155 km long wall divide the city in two and separate families and intimates? At the end of World War II, the four allies against Nazi Germany, the US, UK, France and the Soviet Union, divided Germany and the capital of Berlin in four zones, controlled by these nations. It became clear that the Soviet Union had no intention to slowly let Germany return to the country it once was before the Nazi regime, and they imposed a communistic regime, in the part under their control. This became known as the German Democratic Republic, GDR or East Germany. Berlin, similarly divided, suddenly was encircled by a growing unfriendly nation towards the Western Allies. It was, however, also the only place where East German citizens still could easily escape their autocratic regime, by fleeing to the Western Allies zones. These flight attempts had been increasing in the years leading up to 1961. As soon as it became apparent to the East German government this meant an enormous drain of their population, in 1961 they erected a wall to, for once and for all, isolate East Berlin from the rest of the city and to prevent citizens from fleeing to the western side. The wall separated families, friends and loved ones. It split sometimes literary housing blocks in two and suddenly ended through roads. It became the symbol of the Cold War and the division of Europe. The East German government, in cooperation with the Soviet Union, began constructing the wall on August 13, 1961. The barrier was made of concrete and was approximately 155 kilometers long and 3.6 meters high. It became more and more heavily fortified over time, with guard towers, barbed wire, automatic motion sensing machine guns and minefields to prevent people from crossing. The Berlin Wall stood for 28 years, during which time it became a profound symbol of the political and ideological divide between the communist Eastern Bloc and the capitalist Western countries. However, it also became a canvas for artists from around the world, who used it as a medium to express their political views, personal messages and artistic talents. These expressions, however, were only seen on the free western side of the wall, as, obviously, there was no chance to express your free voice in the eastern part. The first artist actually starting with painting the wall with murals is the French artist Thierry Noir, 
as he had to work fast to prevent being spotted by East German guards, he developed a now famous cartoon-like style, drawing heads in one single line with just a few colors. Another notable work of art on the Berlin Wall was made by the famous American artist Keith Haring. This 300 meter long painting, which depicts interlinking human bodies, was painted in 1986 and, according to Herring, symbolizes the quest for unity between West and East Germany. The painting was slowly painted over by other artists in the years to come and finally demolished when that part of the wall was removed in 1991. Today, one of the most iconic and recognizable works of art on the Berlin Wall, erected though after the collapse on the eastern side, is the Fraternal Kiss or also called My God, Help Me to Survive This Deadly Love by the Soviet artist Dmitry Vrubel. This painting, which depicts Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev and East German leader Erich Honecker, locked in a passionate kiss, was painted in 1990 and became a symbol of the end of the Cold War. The painting was actually taken from a real-life photograph of the two leaders. Other notable works of art today can still be found on a 1.3 km long section of the Berlin Wall that has been preserved as an open-air gallery called the East Side Gallery. It features murals by over 100 different artists from around the world. And something that is a must-have for a video on the Berlin Wall is obviously the Pink Floyd concert at the Berlin Wall. Again. This performance was after the official collapse in 1990, but it is truly a manifest of how deeply the world had changed. The slow collapse of communist governments in Eastern Europe at the end of the 1980s culminated in mass demonstrations at the Berlin Wall and people breaching it finally on November 9, 1989. It was the beginning of the end for the Warsaw Pact, led to the subsequent reunification of Germany a year later, and it ultimately set the stage for the eventual collapse of the Soviet Union a few years later. After the breach and literal collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1989, most of the stretches were completely removed in just a couple of years. The remaining segments of the wall that still stand today are protected as historical monuments and have become popular tourist destinations. Many of these segments have been shattered in multiple pieces and are now sold off to tourists. Some, like my piece, still bearing the vibrant colors of the artists who have been using the wall as their canvas. My piece also still has some rebar in it, as a silent witness of the blunt, strong force the wall had to radiate, warning people to stay in and not to mess with their government. I use this rebar to mount the wall piece in a pedestal and a glass dome to protect the vulnerable painting on it. This fragment of the Berlin Wall in my possession is a powerful reminder of a significant moment in history it represents a moment, a time, when the world was divided and people were denied their basic human rights. The graffiti on the wall tells a story of hope, defiance and resilience. It was a way for people to express themselves and make their voices heard, despite the oppressive regime. Well, my intellectual friends, I really hope you liked this video again. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. That really helps me to uh, continue to make uh, good videos for the future. Thanks again for watching and see you next time in the Wunderkammer.